Yeah, and what exactly is a tangible interaction? Well, it's a sensory experience that people can, I guess, experience when they go to concerts like Coldplay or the Blue Man Group. What is it? What do they do? We'll find out in three minutes. Ooh, I'm big writing there. <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> Yeah, and it's kind of cool, and you may not even realize that you are probably seeing the works of tangible interaction. Of course, Jody went to the Coldplay concert, and she thought some of the interaction stuff was super cool, but this is a local company. Um, Alex, tell us a little bit about what tangible interaction does. We are a local creative, creative studio, and we do uh, interactive installations mainly for the event industry and also for like public works. Uh, we also do like commission uh, public hard work. So what do we have right here? This is a tangible interaction. This is a tangible interaction. This is uh, called the graffiti wall and it's kind of like a paint application that you can uh, use with a real graffiti can. Completely so legal. Yes, completely <laughs> legal. <laughs> so without getting into anything that's super secret, how does it actually work? Because there's no, obviously there's no paint or anything coming out there's of that. There's no paint. There's uh, infrared light coming out of the can. That goes through the screen and there's a camera behind it. And then the camera can see where the light is coming from. And then we have a piece of software that can match that and then convert it into digital paint. And you can change the colors and all that and kind yes, of stuff as well. And you have some pretty high profile clients that have used this technology. Yeah, we just uh, came back from, uh, from LA where we used uh, this for uh, the launch of Hennessy, a new drink that they have. Uh, and we've done like launch events with uh, Chanel and with many different brands around the world. An award winning there, Jody and Riaz, by the way. Coming up next, you've probably seen the Zygote Ball and the Blue Man Group. We're going to find out a little bit about the creative process and how they create these digital interactions. Hold on, I've got to do one more here. Nelson, do you want to do one? Here, you go ahead. I look, uh, what is that, a, a horse? It's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Anyone that's seen the Blue Man Group, you know those zygote balls? Well, guess what? They created them here at Tangible Interaction, the ball that literally got the ball rolling. We'll be right back. Come on, it's another pure gray. Blinded by the light in whatever color I so choose, right? <laughs> Alex, we're here, of course, at Tangible Interaction where people may recognize this technology from the Blue, the Blue Man, Man Group. group. Yes. And in fact, it was this technology that made them want to do business with you. How'd that kind of all get started? We had been doing uh, Zygote Interactive Balls for a couple of years. This was the first project that we started, uh, Tangible started, and they saw the video online and they said they wanted to have this type of uh, interaction in their show. So how does this actually work? So inside we have, this is an inflatable ball, okay. and inside we have uh, what we call a Zygote Cube, and then we shake it, uh, lights up always in a random color. So we have you know red, green, and blue. Uh, that can be, uh, it sort of reacts to you when you shake it, right? So when you push the ball, it senses that and then the ball lights up. Okay, and so you have an element where you can actually have it programmed, mm -hmm. and then there's an element where it can be interactive, for instance, when one of these zygote balls goes into an audience, for instance, right? Exactly. So one of the things that we do is sometimes we set up the balls, uh, you know, over on a big arena, and it starts as a light show, but then we drop them and become interactive. Very cool. And this all started you being kind of doing web-based things. Yeah. I was working online and I wanted to take the interaction from the computer outside into the real world. And this is kind of like a, a button that you touch and lights up. So that was the simplest thing I could do. Very, very cool. You may have seen their technologies again at various concerts, different theatrical productions. But how does it go? I guess what is the creative process from design to completion? We got that coming up, Michelle, uh, just before 8 o'clock. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and you may have seen uh, their works with uh, groups like the Blue Man Group and, of course, the big band Coldplay. And now you're working on a tour for Trust doing their lighting design, right? Yes. Trust is a, a really good Canadian band and where the commission has to do uh, all the lighting set design. Very cool. So we want to get an idea of the creative process. Where does it all start? Uh, it starts with, you know, in exchanging ideas with the, with the group. You know, it's a bit of a collaboration. And then from there, we think about what what the installation will look like. And we go into like just very simple sketches, sketches that become more of a fleshed out uh, look and feel for what we want this thing to be on stage, uh, and then into renders uh, or what we want the shapes to be. And when you're discussing with the band, you're also given a certain criteria, different parameters. For instance, uh, setup and teardown for the band is huge. Yeah, for this band that is uh, it's a, sm a smaller band, so they actually move from theater to theater very like very quickly. So we go, we try to make things that are like you know collapsible. 
uh, that they can just put together and take in, in, and take down very quickly. So they may say we have 10 minutes to tear it down, and it's got to work like that. Exactly. Let's talk about the materials. So, they use. Yeah. So you know, from the design, we go into looking at materials, and we look for materials that are like reflected that they, they reflect the light really nicely. They diffuse the light really nicely. And this material in particular is it, it feels like paper, but it's not. It's Tyvek, and it doesn't break. So it's very good for them to use these kind of stuff. And then you have a lighting element. So I mean, obviously, it's this is just a prototype, but essentially the lighting element would go exactly, inside. inside. Excellent. I'll let you turn those lights on yeah. right now. Uh, tangible interaction, doing some really great work. And there you go. And you can sign the software too. So you see here this, the, yeah. the, the lighting modules and then the paper part will go over top. Very cool. Well, we're going to be with you guys all morning long. Coming up next, we'll take a look at an upcoming installation that will be happening at Science World. Up next, though, what are we going to see in the weather? And what about that traffic? Those details coming up. Yeah, lots of cool I things to this. see there in studio and tons of cool things to see here at Tangible uh, Interaction. So we're going to take a look at an upcoming thing they have uh, going, a display that's going to be happening at Science World and some of the other great things that they do here. We'll be right back. You're watching City. Yeah, yeah, and we're hearing a little bit of Coldplay in the background, which is one of the great bands that you've been able to work with. Uh, you get approached just sometimes just by someone seeing something previously that you've done, right? That's the way it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so something that we're seeing right now uh, is something that's in progress for Science World. Tell us about this. Yeah, this uh, piece is called Halo, and then uh, we did it with funding from uh, BC Creative uh, Fund. And we showed it a couple of places already in Toronto and the States, and now it's coming to Science World. Okay, and so it's still uh, in progress. You're still working on it. There will be an interactive. Yes. The piece itself is done, but now the interactive component, we keep changing it every time we show it, so we keep it all fresh. So we're working on the interactive component now. And how long does it take for you to kind of design something? Uh, it takes, you know, it could take a couple months, could take a year, it depends on what we're doing. Okay, and now we've got, of course, it's all about the sensory experience. Yeah. Tell us about this. So this is a project we're doing for push festival and it's going to be a series of uh, very interactive immersive experiences that are going to be on the street. So someone would stick their head up here and yeah. there would be something that happens. Exactly. I can just imagine the potential. I mean it's almost like someone could be transported to another world. That's what perhaps we're trying to. Vacation. <laughs> I, I'm seeing it. Hey this is how it works right? You start getting the juices flowing. Tell us about what you have here. This is a, a social media visualizer that we use for like uh, brand launches and large events where all this social media content happening at the event is being moderated and comes in live here to this live feed. Right, so you might see a tweet that comes up. Yeah, we happened to put like the that bearware one. hashtag yes. that we had on breakfast television this morning. Exactly. Very cool stuff here. Again, tangible interaction. You probably have seen their works and not even realized it. Blue Man Group, Coldplay, and upcoming at Science World. And speaking of coming up, what's the weather going to hold? Russ has those details. We'll be right back. I want you to see 